Hey everybody, I'm Robert and I am here with the GT2 RSMR and it's funny, we're actually filming some other videos and I looked at this car, I saw the wheel disc, I saw the wing and my second thought, my first thought was, wow, that looks pretty badass. <laughs> my, my second thought was how many messages I get saying, oh, those aero discs, those wheel cooling, brake cooling discs, those things are so cool. And I thought, why don't I just do a video that talks only about that? It's not going to be a long video, it's going to be a short video, but there's going to be a couple concepts that we want to talk about here, okay? You have the rear wheel of this car and you have your brake discs in there. You've got veins in the brake discs, air is coming into the brake disc and shooting out. Um, you've got obviously the motion of the wheel rotating and that's creating a, a great uh, force of air, obviously, as it rotates around. And what these wheel discs do is nothing more than manage the air that's coming through the wheels and around the car. That's all it does. So you could imagine that if you've got these wheels spinning, it could act as a fan blade. Um, and this disc minimizes the effect of the wheels on the air that's traveling around the car and coming ultimately off the wheel up into the wheelhouse and things of that nature. There's a lot going on with it, but you can simply look at it as air management and that's all that wheel disc is doing, okay? That wheel disc helps channel the air ultimately that comes around the car, okay? And it affects the rear wing actually. With those wheel discs, the GT2 RSMR is able to run two degrees less wing and get the same downforce numbers. So if I didn't have those wheel discs, I would put two degrees more wing angle uh, on this bracket here in the back. And I would ultimately tilt the wing forward, which will give us more downforce. The issue with more downforce from a wing when it's simply tilted is that the air hits that wing and creates drag, okay? So as air comes in and hits a wing that's, that's tilted on an angle, it's going to create drag and it's going to slow the car down in high speed areas. Before I've said top speed. Now, when I talk about top speed, I'm talking about the top speed of every braking point on a track. So it doesn't matter if you went from 80 kilometers an hour up to 200, or if you went from 80 up to 140, your top speed in one case was 140, your top speed in the next straightaway is 200. I'm not talking about the all out top speed of the car. That's very important to understand. So when I come out of a turn with two degrees of angle, uh, increased angle, I might only go from 80 kilometers an hour up to 200 before I hit the braking zone, my next braking zone, okay? So let's say that if I take out the two degrees of wing angle and I put the wheel discs on, maybe I can get three or four kilometers an hour more on that straightaway because I was able to accelerate faster. That's what these wheel discs do. They allow us to run less wing angle, which means less drag on the back of the car and ultimately a higher top speed in every single straight, uh, straight line acceleration point. Over a course of a 21 kilometer lap on the Nürburgring, one to two kilometers an hour in each major acceleration point could mean the difference of a couple seconds. So that's literally what this does. That's the reason for those wheel discs. They don't cool the brakes. They don't, they're, they don't, they're not turbo fans. They don't do anything else. They don't extract heat away from the motor or anything like that. They're simply air management to help the airflow around the vehicle and to optimize the, the streamline effect that the car has through the air. Anyways, I hope that shed a little bit of light into the, to the concept behind them. And uh, let me know any other questions you have about this car or any other cars we have. We'll catch you guys later.